If you're a fan of Pokemon Go, I'm sure you know all about gym battles. It's where you take your little friends, you capture it against their will, and make them fight each other. They gain skills, you level up, and it's an overall great time. Lucky for the Pokemon, they aren't actually real, so their enslavement is entirely fictional. And lucky for you, it's not 2016, and this isn't an episode about Pokemon. If you want to watch one of those, try this one. But we're not going to have gym battles. We're going to have gem battles. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! See, I had a plan the whole time. You shouldn't have doubted me. But before we keep going, I want to thank you guys for taking a moment to click on that bell so you know every time we release a new video. First in the octagon that I assume sits atop a brilliant cut stone are the mighty emerald and the awesome aquamarine. Both of these gems are varieties of barrel, which evens the playing field a bit. But there are a couple of key differences that may give one of the stones an advantage. The bold greeniness of emerald is certainly impressive, and some might argue is more striking than the color of aquamarine. A famous Roman historian once said of emeralds, nothing greens greener. But the stone's toughness or resistance to breakage is generally less than that of aquamarine, despite clocking in around an eight on the Mohs hardness scale. This also makes finding high clarity emeralds really challenging, which is why the purest of emeralds can be hecka expensive. Some unearthed emeralds have exhibited a radial or spoke pattern called a trapeche emerald. While I'm not sure this gives the emerald a strategic advantage over aquamarine, it may make the opposing stone green with envy. Which brings me to emerald's formidable crystalline opponent, aquamarine. The blue hue always comes from iron ions, and its shade depends on whether it's iron 2 or a combination of iron 2 and 3. This gives the stone a strategic advantage over emerald. Though both stones are about an eight on the Mohs scale, aquamarine isn't nearly as brittle as emerald. So a swift kick to the girdle would do more damage to an emerald than an aquamarine. But a slight edge on strength isn't the whole picture. One could argue that this comes down to a beauty contest. While a faceted aquamarine is stunning, its color usually isn't as bold as a vibrant green emerald. If you want a blue that blues like emeralds green, you'll have to look beyond aquamarine. Wow, I turned into Dr. Seuss there for a second. Now, I'm not poo-pooing on our friend aquamarine. The subtle hue of this stone is still striking. This is simply where gem battles get subjective. So let me know in the comments which gem you find superior. But that's not all. We actually have a triple threat match between diamond, quartz, and jade. There's an old saying amongst gemologists, if you hit a diamond with a hammer, it'll shatter into a dozen pieces. Hit a piece of quartz with a hammer, it'll split into two. Hit a piece of jade with a hammer, it'll ring like a bell. Diamond gets a lot of credit for being the hardest gem, but if it's more prone to shatter, how is that possible? This comes down to a misunderstanding of the term hardness in gemology, which is what may give Diamond's competitors an advantage. We saw this a little bit in the matchup between Emerald and Aquamarine, two stones of similar hardness, one being more brittle than the other. In layman's terms, hardness really just means scratchability. Diamond being the least scratchable gem out there and talc being so scratchable, you can do it with your fingernail. Any stone that's higher on the Mohs scale can scratch any softer stone on the same scale. A diamond can scratch both quartz and jade. A quartz can scratch jade, but jade can't scratch quartz or diamond and quartz can't scratch diamond. Wow, that felt like a word problem, but you get what I mean. So let's get back to the proverbial hammer and say it has a hardness of five or six. That hammer isn't scratching anything, but it could certainly shatter the diamond because of its low tenacity or resistance to blows. On the tenacity scale, these stones rank in the opposite direction. Jade has an extremely tough tenacity, quartz has a moderately tough tenacity, and diamonds are comparatively brittle. This evens out the playing field a bit. One could argue that since most people aren't hammering their gemstones and scratching is a far more likely hazard to encounter, diamonds still may have the strategic edge. But if our friends Jade and Quartz decide to tag in Mr. Hammer, then Diamond better watch his pavilion. Which gem do you think would come out on top? Is this the most expensive fight between inanimate objects you've ever imagined? Let us know down in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. For more information on hardness and tenacity, check out the links below. Thanks for watching.